Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, hey, I'm Debbie, and I make art videos. So for those of you that know, this is not my usual setup, I'm not at home, I'm currently in Calgary, Alberta, and that's about nine hours away from where I live. I live in absolute middle of nowhere, and I went to a huge art supply store, and I looked at all the things, and I picked up a few things, and I'm going to show you what I got. This is what I got at the Kensington Art Supply Store here in Calgary, Alberta. And I'll talk about these a little bit and then we'll do a little bit of swatching. So the first thing that I'm super excited about is these Japanese manga art pens. These Japanese manga pens. These Japanese manga nips. These Japanese manga nips. Yay! And I also got a pen holder for the nips. It's from the company Tachikawa. And if you're not familiar with uh, manga nips, the G model nips are very renowned and very widely used in Japan. I have never tried them and never seen them in a store before. So I'm super excited to give them a go. And then I also found these that look very similar to the hunt nibs that I usually use. So this is the pen nib that I usually use, and it's super flexible, but also quite fragile, let's say. So they don't last like a super long time. So I thought I would give these a shot and see what they're like. And I'm super, super excited to try them. I'll do a, a video exclusively on using these pens, and I think I'll probably ink like a comic panel or something to give them a good a good shot but really really excited about that and then I picked up a couple of paints so they're basically the same colors <laughs> but from two different brands I've never bought anything from M. Graham so this is an American company and they are honey-based paints, so similar to Sennelier, and I picked up Quinacridone Rust and uh, Azo Yellow, and then in Daniel Smith, I picked up Quinacridone Burnt Orange, which is the exact same pigment, they just name it differently, and then their Nickel Azo Yellow, but it happens to be a different pigment. My intention with these is that I found out that both of my versions of Cronacron Gold, this one is the original pigment from Daniel Smith, and this one is a multi-pigment mix from Windsor Newton, have both been discontinued. So I am going to see if I can mix my own. So we'll do a video with these in the future, but I'll do a little bit of swatching of the colors to show you what they look like. And then I picked up a few pencils. So I don't have a white pencil crayon at all, and I've been trying to like learn how to use pencil crayons <laughs> in a painted fashion. So I picked up this one here. There was no uh, white available in the Prismacolor, so I picked up one from Faber-Castell. And then I also picked up a few other polychromas. This is um, backups for this green gold. I'm just obsessed with these kind of colors. It's a very similar color to this, very similar color to this. I'm just into it and embracing the fact that I'm into it. So I got a couple of these because mine is getting small. And I picked up this, what is it called here? It is gray green light from Prismacolor. I thought it was a neat light green. And Green Earth from Polychromos, Faber-Castell. And then I picked up this gigantic Albrecht Durer watercolor pencil from Faber-Castell. I've never seen these before. So that's like a regular size pencil and that's this jumbo size pencil. I just thought it might be an interesting different tool to use and I thought this color was really neat. It is Venetian red. And then I have Caron de Nash. So this is the color Bordeaux. 
and then I got it in the color green ochre, which is similar to this one, <laughs> and ultramarine blue, which I'm just really into ultramarine blue. I used to think it was a boring color, but I am just getting really into it. I was looking for the ultramarine in the polychromos. I think I couldn't find it or I thought this color might be a little bit nicer. So this one is the Deft Blue. And that's just another one of the green golds because I'm obsessed. <laughs> so I'll give these things a, a little bit of a swatch and we'll take a better look at them. So we'll swatch in this Royal Town sketchbook as well as on this watercolor paper with the watercolors. That's a really nice color. Don't know if this will show up. Not really. But this I bought basically for blending purposes. It shows up subtly on this toned paper. Now I think this is the only watercolor pencil that I bought. That's pretty fun to use. <laughs> That's a nice color. It's more uh, terracotta-y than I thought it would be. Yeah, I think this, this is interesting. I might actually want that in black. But I didn't put that much down either. Maybe I'll try layering it up over here. Maybe here. Now I have to check with these um, pencils, but I feel like they're actually waterproof, these permanent color pencils. I was gonna pick up a couple of luminance colors, but six dollars a pop so that's pretty pigmented so let's give these paints a whirl there's some of the binder leaking out that happens sometimes i have a feeling i'm gonna like this color oh that is not what i expected okay <laughs> maybe that is not the color that i intended to get oh but i do like that kind of yellow i think it is not the pigment I intended to get. The naming is deceiving. This is a nice, clean, bright yellow though. Ooh, very, very smooth. Very pigmented. Wow. Well, well, well. M. Graham, you're fancy schmancy. That is a very impressive color load. High pigmentation. It is a, a pricey brand, but I mean for the amount that you get here, it's more affordable than the Daniel Smith. It's kind of like a red ochre, but more orangey. nice. I don't know if it is as fancy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but I do like that color and I do use like a red ochre. I do like myself a red ochre so. So we'll try the Daniel Smith version of this. And you can see like I barely put anything in there and like look how much coverage. Very very concentrated. So this looks a little bit redder, maybe. So that's the exact same pigment, but 
they call this one a rust, I believe, and they call this one an orange. So different processing, get a different result. And that can happen with pigments, you know? And I really hope that this color is the color that I wanted. Schmink makes a version of this that I really like, so if this isn't it, the Schmincke one is, is it for me anyways. I like it a lot, but it's not as green as the Schmincke version. This is kind of like a warmer version of the Schmincke one, but I actually really like it a lot. So I'm gonna quickly mix those two and see what happens. I'll do further testing with these pigments and the ones that I have at home in order to recreate these guys because I'm a little bummed out about it, to be honest. This one is my favorite, even though that is the original pigment. I actually went into a fancy pen shop that had beautiful fountain pens just to look around. <laughs> and I picked up this uh, Pentel Energel. It's like a gel pen, but in a 0.5. So it's really nice and fine and brown. So that was kind of a cool little extra. from Asia, so East Asia. I picked up a few different little blind boxes. This one is my husband's and it'll live in his studio. It's pretty cool. It like flips and you get different eyes. You can move, oh no, you can't move the dials, but a cool little toy from Skull Panda. And I got this little Lulu pig. And I just love this pig collection. I don't know if you can tell that it's like kind of fuzzy, but I love the shape of this pig. So I have a few of those and now I've got this little waiter. And then I picked up this one. It's Molnita. This collection was like a fashion collection. Really cute. Oh, and of course, this amazing, amazing piece here. She was like the star of that collection, so I was pretty jazzed to get her. Really cool. And you know, although it's a toy, it's not really a toy, I think that things like this are, if you like them, inspirational to have around and also there's a lot of things that like if they're done in a more animated style if you draw them in a more animated style it's hard to like see what they would look like in three dimensions and I think that little toys like this little figures like this help you like understand how something would be transferred into three dimensions and that might help you you know, they, they can act as reference in a way for s certain shapes. So in the same way that an anatomy model might be handy, things like this, if you like to draw cartoony things, things like this is, are also very good references. James Gurney does it. I've seen him make dioramas using toys and figure out lighting by staging toys. So if he does it, you have full permission to buy as many toys as you want. <laughs> Anyhow, I just want to mention that as like another kind of art object that might be, although seeming frivolous, might actually provide a lot of inspiration in your workspace and also informative. It actually is very informative. So I hope you enjoyed that video and let me know if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see me do with those Japanese manga nibs. If you have any ideas, put it in the comment section below and also let me know what you like to collect. Do you collect toys? Do you have any specific line that you love? And 
how do you decorate your workspace? What do you find inspiring to have around you while you're working? I'd love to know. So I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.